90s Cartoon Network cartoons hold a special place in my heart. When I was like pre-K age, they were all I would watch. Dexter's Lab, Johnny Bravo, Ed Ed and Eddie, and of course the Powerpuff Girls, along with old Scooby-Doo reruns and Hong Kong Fooey, and I was a happy camper. It wasn't until a little bit later in my childhood that I became enamored with Nicktoons, but as far as cartoon cartoons go, the Powerpuff Girls was always one of my favorites. I got the chance to talk about it recently in another video about the Freaky Friday Flip, which I'll link in the description down below for you to check out after this one. After making that video, I was left with the drive to check out Powerpuff Girls some more. I remember watching it when I was growing up and just loving all the villains in this show. There were so many good ones. You got Fuzzy Lumpkins, the Amoeba Boys, the Gang Green Gang, and of course Mojo Jojo. I said this in the last video that I talked about this show, but I feel like they put a lot more creativity into the villains of the show than they did to the protagonists. Don't get me wrong, I love the Powerpuff Girls. They're charismatic, brave, and strong, and they make for great protagonists, but in my opinion, finding out which villain they're fighting this time is always what makes the episode for me. The villains in the show are just so well created and have so much character to them, but of all the villains in the show, there's one that reigns the most sinister, creepy, and dangerous foe of all. We're talking about none other than him. Him is a powerful, flamboyant devil who's the king of the underworld. He's immortal and has dark magical powers. Him has a very androgynous appearance with his large lobster-like claws, pointy ears, widow's peak hair, and his long, curled beard. More than anything, it's his smile for me. He has that sinister smile that just screams that he's up to no good. He's usually seen wearing this interesting ladies red jacket and skirt with what seems to be pink fur at the collar and hemline, and of course his thigh high spike heeled stiletto boots. Not surprisingly, we don't know much about him. We don't know why he hates the Powerpuff Girls, but we do know that he's often keen to attacking psychologically rather than physically. He's an ominous being that I grew up being incredibly terrified of. That's why today, on our nostalgic walk down memory lane, we're gonna check out a few episodes revolving around him. But first, really quick, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you for checking out my channel and for being a part of my YouTube journey. If you're subscribed to my channel, then extra thanks to you because you are the actual best. If you're not subscribed, then I need your help. I'm on a journey to reach 100,000 subscribers and I can't do it without you. If you like what you see, subscribe so you don't miss my future videos, and with that being said, let's just get right into it. The first episode we're going to check out is actually the first episode to ever feature him. We're looking at the season 1 episode, Octi Evil. The city of Townsville is under attack! We see the Powerpuff Girls fighting this giant red Hydra-like monster, and they end up using it for Bubbles to jump rope. But what's this? It appears our girls are secretly being monitored. Oh no, not... <gasps> I, I, I can't say it! This is a villain so evil, so sinister, so horribly vile, that even the utterance of his name strikes fear into the hearts of men! The only safe way to refer to this King of Darkness is simply... him. Oh, snake bees. You didn't destroy them at all, did you? We cut over to the Powerpuff Girls, who are using the Hydra monster that we learned was sent by him to play catch. Buttercup throws it too hard and causes Blossom to accidentally crash into a building that the mayor is in. Her and Buttercup start fighting. Well, I love it when you girls fight. I think 
you should fight more often. <laughs> oh, Bubbles, don't cry, little one. We cut to the Powerpuff Girls' house at bedtime, where Blossom and Buttercup are in a verbal altercation, and the professor is trying unsuccessfully to break it up. We see Bubbles in her room just crying her eyes out, saying that she hates fighting. Yes, Bubbles, I can talk. And I heard what you were saying about your sisters. You're right, Bubbles. It's wrong for them to fight. You are talking. Octi tells Bubbles to get closer so that they can talk, and he uses telekinesis to close the door so she doesn't have to listen to the fighting anymore. In my opinion, Blossom is being far too bossy for her own good. In fact, I think that Buttercup should be in charge. Yeah, that's it. Bubbles, you should talk to Buttercup and tell her that she should be running the show. Oh, what did I tell you about him? Evil, evil, pure and simple. We cut over to the kindergarten where the girls get called by the mayor to go fight a giant monster. They head out and we see Bubbles flying while holding Octi still. Blossom tells her to put him down, but when she goes to, Octi argues with her. Octi, I have to put you down. Why? Why? Just because Blossom told you to? But... Blossom's not... Always right, you know. Oh? We see Blossom and Buttercup just getting destroyed as they refuse to work together. Bubbles tells Buttercup that Octi said she should do what she wants and to not do what Blossom wants. That gives Buttercup all the convincing that she needs to attack carelessly. <laughs> Later that night, we see Blossom and Buttercup fighting yet again, this time a lot more elevated. The professor tries to break it up, but he's unable to when the girls start fighting with their powers. Well, I suppose it was inevitable. I always knew they wouldn't last. On the same team! <laughs> when Blossom and Buttercup is in fighting, Bubbles doesn't stand a chance! <laughs> Just then, we see Bubbles in her room crying to Octi, who isn't responding to her anymore. Octi? Why don't you say something? Stupid little girl. Huh? They're fighting because of you. Because you believe your toys can really talk. And you actually do what they tell you to do. Good, I'm flattered. Him tells Bubbles that he's going to destroy the world and he leaves in Octi's body. Bubbles gives chase trying to stop him, but he's already destroyed a few buildings by the time she gets to him. Stop! You used me! Oh, is that what I did? That's not fair! No, it isn't. Neither is this! <laughs> With Blossom and Buttercup joining forces to save Bubbles, him in his Octi form burns to ashes. After that, we cut over to the girls at home, reflecting on what they learned. <laughs> For all my hard work, I should be the leader! <laughs> <laughs> you tell them, Bubbles. So once again, the day is saved, thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. Now, this episode is one that I clearly remember terrifying me when I was a little kid. Him is a character that just shook me to my core. Like, not only is he literally the devil, but like, the way they put that echo in his falsetto-esque voice is just so ominous. It really shined through in this episode, that's for sure. This one is a shining example of what's so creepy about him, though. When he attacked in this episode, it was strictly psychological. 
He sent other monsters to fight, but like, his personal attacks on Bubbles weren't really him per se. He took the form of Octi, but I don't think it was literally him in the flesh. This whole time, he's been using Octi as a vessel to communicate with Bubbles, so who's to say he couldn't take over Octi's form and manipulate it how he pleased? He is the devil after all, so I'm pretty sure he has the ability to do that. One thing I found interesting in this episode is the fact that Him felt the need to target Bubbles because she's the weakest of the three girls, as seen when they start fighting and Bubbles just cries. She's the most emotionally vulnerable, which would naturally lead you to being more susceptible to a psychic attack, such as the one Him used on her. I just gotta take a sec and say that it's almost unfathomable how powerful Him really is. Like, they can't even refer to him by his name, they just refer to him by his pronoun because he is literally that evil. It's actually kinda badass when you look at it that way. Like, this guy was able to use the power of telekinesis to shut a door when he wasn't even actually there, he was just using Octi as a vessel to communicate, that's how powerful he is. Other than that though, I really like that this was the episode that introduced us to him as a character. This episode really did it in a rather creepy manner that left us as viewers feeling very uneasy and, I don't know about you guys, but kind of anxious. Fun fact though, this is the only episode where we see Octi's facial expression change. Usually Octi is seen sporting a rather lazy smile, but when him had possessed Octi, he was donning a rather wicked looking smile. I do find it interesting that literally they didn't really have to fight him at all whatsoever to beat him. It was just their love as sisters that ultimately caused them to defeat him in the end. There was no actual battle that took place, just a little bit of property damage. Like him in his Octi form destroyed a few buildings, but like other than that when Buttercup and Blossom reunited he just kind of gave up I guess, I don't know. One way you could look at it could be that with Blossom and Buttercup reuniting, it gave Bubbles hope, which caused him to lose the power he had over Bubbles, so he just maybe ran and went back into hiding, I'm not sure, but either way, this episode served as a pretty solid introduction to him as a character, I'd say. Next up, we're gonna check out another episode featuring him, and this one is, of course, yet another one that shook me to my core as a child. We're checking out the Season 2 episode, Speed Demon. This episode starts out with a nice and sunny day in the city of Townsville, while Buttercup is counting down the seconds for the bell to ring so that she can go home for the weekend. Buttercup? Buttercup! Huh? Please, pay attention! Now, where was I? Oh yes, if Billy and Sally each had an apple, then that's two apples. But if Billy threw his apple to Sally at a trajectory of 1.8 meters per second, assuming an Einsteinian universe, the distance between two points remaining constant, space and time being two elements of the same ratio... After her obnoxiously long math equation, Miss Keen excuses the class for the weekend. Oh boy, a whole weekend in the Bahamas, I can't wait! gonna lay out and work on my turn. And a whole weekend away from the city of Townsville. And the hotline phone. Wow, Powerpuff Girls, this is the mayor. Get over here right away. I seem to have accidentally flushed myself down that toilet. We see the girls getting ready to leave and Buttercup challenges the other girls to a race home and they all speed off as fast as they can. The girls go through this trippy, psychedelic tunnel as they fly through time and space, and they come out on the other side in front of their house. Buttercup is rude to Bubbles, and she starts crying for the professor, so they run into his lab. Sugar, spice, and powdered rice? No, no, darn, why didn't I write it down? Alone. Professor, it's us, the Powerpuff Girls. 
stay back. Leave me alone. The girls exit the house as fast as they can, and they find the city of Townsville just in ruins. They make their way to the mayor's office, and this happens. Why wouldn't they come? It doesn't make any sense. And now it's too late. He's gone. <laughs> The girls are flying away, and they can't help but wonder how this could have happened. They make their way to their school, where they find their teacher, Miss Keen, just repeating the same thing over and over again. I just stood there waving goodbye, and they raced off. Just stood there, stood there waving goodbye, and they raced off for 50 years. 50 years. 50 years. 50 years. 50 years. <laughs> Don't you know, the faster you go, time slows down. We see him appear on some wreckage nearby. He starts taunting them psychologically. Yeah. It's coming back now. <laughs> so, which one of you slowpokes wants to race me home? No! Yes! As you race through time, the whole world went to heck. The girls fight him and just pound him into oblivion, but he doesn't really seem phased. They taunt him, but he transforms into a gigantic demon monster. He tells them that all of this is their fault because they abandoned their friends. You did this. You did this. No! All I did was take over. It was easy. Why'd you leave us, Powerpuff Girls? Why? You weren't here to protect us. You weren't here. It's your fault. Your fault. Everybody blames the Powerpuff Girls for what happened, and the guilt eats them alive. They fly up into the air, and they end up crashing back down, and flying backwards, and back in time. And then all these people are old, and this bell had warts! Okay, okay, okay. But if we don't hurry, we'll miss our flight to the Bahamas. Sorry, Professor, but we can't leave Townsville. Can you imagine what would happen if we weren't here to protect it? Well, heck if I know. Exactly! So once again... Haha, <laughs> psych! So once again, the day is, was, and forever will be saved thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. I'm never gonna drive over 55 again. This episode is another really good one, in my opinion. I gotta give some love to Bubbles for her impression of the mayor in the beginning. It just had me dying. Other than that, though, seeing Buttercup in the beginning just counting the seconds until class is over was just so relatable. This was me all throughout growing up, just so excited to get out of class on a Friday. Even now as an adult, this is me at my computer at work just counting down the seconds until my shift is over and I can go home. I noticed something else that I definitely have to bring up, which I'm not gonna lie, I didn't connect the dots on until my second time watching this episode through while doing research for this video. In the beginning, we see the girls' teacher, Miss Keen, doing some math equations. She starts spouting off this really complex equation, but what really caught my attention was the very end of it. Between two successive events, the quantum rules that govern the subatomic level of the universe according to Einstein's theory of relativity, time does not remain a constant added quantity when approaching the speed of light. Therefore, as one approaches the speed of light, the distance between the two successive points shrinks to zero. However, for the people back home, a considerable amount of time would pass somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 years. Watching this the second time, I totally realized that Miss Keen literally wrote out the scientific equation that represents exactly what the girls did that resulted in them being teleported 50 years in the future. When the girls are 50 years in the future, we see Miss Keen seemingly with PTSD just standing there in the school repeating the same thing over and over and over again. It was really shocking to see her like this, but I can't help but wonder what got her there. Who came by to question her that resulted in her being stuck in repeating those words over and over again? I can't help but paint this picture in my mind of, like, the government coming to talk to her about where the Powerpuff Girls went and seeing the equation written on the chalkboard and wondering if Miss Keen had anything to do with their disappearance, but I don't know, that's just my inner conspiracy theorist going crazy with the events of this episode. 
I do want to take a second to point out that when the city was in ruins, I really loved the way that they just had that ominous red filter over everything. It just kind of looked like a destroyed hellscape of ruin and despair. The artists on the show did a great job of drawing the city in ruins. Watching it back now as an adult, I can't lie, it kind of gives me Fallout New Vegas vibes just a tiny bit. Now really quick, I do want to stress that I enjoyed this episode. It was really good and it kept my attention the whole time. However, I do have just a small problem with the way that they got back to the present time. They literally just like fell to the ground from the skies above and just kind of scooted backwards and it sent them back in time to the exact day that they needed to go to. By that logic, if that's just how it works, then the girls need to worry about just, like, in general, falling at the wrong speed because it could just send them back in time, apparently. I don't know, it just didn't make sense to me. Like, they had to put in all this effort to get to the exact speed to go this far forward in the future, and it felt like it took so much effort, but going back was just like, oh yeah, we fell back like 10 feet, and now we're back 50 years in the past. I don't know, maybe I'm looking too far into it, but it just feels like it didn't make much sense. But I do have to say though, him was so incredibly creepy in this episode. The way he was talking in rhyme when we first saw him was just so eerie. He's one of those characters where it like almost doesn't matter what he's doing, just him being there is creepy enough. He has such an eerie presence that it's kind of impressive. This episode was a good showcase of his power as he transformed into a massive demon monster to fight the Powerpuff Girls. Him having the ability to change his form is just another factor that makes him literally the most dangerous foe for the Powerpuff Girls to face. Another thing that really creeps me out about him is the way he just kind of doesn't put up a fight sometimes. When we see the girls swarm him and all just like start wailing on him, he doesn't really flinch or try to fight back. It's like he just takes the beating without even batting an eye. His ability to do that is kind of freaky, not gonna lie, but somehow I'm not surprised. Looking back on the show, it kind of surprises me that Cartoon Network would allow this show to have a character like him, given that he has such a kind of satanic implication, but on that same note, this is the same network that aired Cowed and Chicken with the Red Devil guy who is usually showing his butt, so hey, it is what it is I guess. All in all, I feel like him is a great character because he's definitely one of the most mysterious and creepy of all the villains in the show. But hey, that's just my opinion. But I gotta ask, what do you think? Is him your favorite villain from this show? If not, who is your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. I always love seeing your guys' feedback. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a like and maybe share it with a friend. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.